This evening's program is the Lakes Region Ice Racing Club History, and Mr. Jack Cook is going to do the presentation. So I want to welcome Jack to the meeting. And does anybody have any concerns or announcements they'd like to make today before we start the program? Okay, so we'll welcome Jack. Okay, you're going to have to bear with me a little bit. I've never done anything like this before. <laughs> not, not sober. <laughs> so, uh, we're going to do the best that we can. Okay. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> so, actually, the ice racing club, I started racing before our club started uh, in existence. I worked for uh, Ambrose Brothers in Meredith, and a fellow uh, that used to work there for, uh, he worked there probably 35, 40 years, his name was Richard Martin, and he was born and brought up right down here by Mark Richter's at Montborough Falls, and uh, most of you people that are natives would remember that name, his father was Herb, and, and uh, when Dick had this old Chevy uh, Bel Air, I, and I can't remember the year of it, but uh, it was a little six-cylinder, and it wouldn't pass inspection. So uh, they give it to us guys in the shop there, and there was three of us that was working on it, Bob Bryant, which is here, Larry Layton, and myself, and we was going to take turns driving it. And uh, well, we drew straws, and Bob got to drive it the first week, and after the races, I took it out for a few laps just to see what racing was all about. Well, I couldn't wait for my turn to come, so I went out and bought my own car. Right? <laughs> so. Uh, you know, we really had a lot of fun doing that, and uh, it was uh, a good way to get started. And we raced on Merrith Bay for in 1978 and 79, and the ice conditions got really poor over there with all the aquatherms and the bob houses and different things. And and I think in 1979 we only raced maybe like three times, and we wanted to the guys that were doing the race and wanted to race a little bit more than that. So uh, we took and talked about starting our own club, maybe racing on a pond someplace. So a lot of the guys that were in the club were from Moultonbury area, so we talked about racing, you know, getting the permits and everything to race on Berry Pond. We, uh, I think the first meeting we had was just a four or five guys we, at my house, we talked about it. And then our first official meeting we had was at, uh, uh, which is now Jerry Thomas's well-known place. It was Trey Wilson's then. And we started our own club, and Ron Shaw from Center Harbor, he was a Moultonboro native originally, he was our first president, and I believe Trey Wilson was the vice president when we first started our club. And that went on, oh, I think three years. And if I get off sidetrack, Cindy, you gotta help me on my dates a little bit, <laughs> okay? But I think it was three years that we raced with under uh, president, vice president, and then we just had uh, a stock class. That's all we started with was a stock class. And what did we have? Maybe 35 members when we first started? Yeah, it wasn't very many. I, I, that's a long time ago. But <laughs> it just seems like it just started yesterday, but now we're talking about the history of it. That tell you how <laughs> fast times go, you know? And. Uh, well, we started with just a stock class, and eventually, the, well, I think it was 19, that was 1980 when I, our first year. Yeah. 1981, we, some of us guys that was into it a little bit more than others, like myself, we wanted the modifieds, the open wheels, so we started the open wheel class, the modified. so we had the two classes, and we raced for uh, quite a few years like that, and then... Three years after we started, about 83, we started with a five-member board. Am I right on that, Cindy? You are right. I'm doing good so far. <laughs> <laughs> I got her approval. I'm doing good. Okay. And uh, we, our first board members, I can't remember who they were, but I was the one of them. I think Ed Wakefield might have been one. Eddie, Eddie um, hold on just one second. I'm looking That's right. I need help. Um... 
I think Ron Shaw might have still been on as a um, board member too, right? No, it was John Ludwig, Mike Elder's philosophy. Yeah. You, Bill Balakada. Okay, yeah. And Eddie. And so then that's when the ice racing started really progressing. And uh, we used to have like 30, 30, two or three stock cars that would come on a Sunday. And we have maybe eight to 10, 15 modifiers. And that was when every, it started getting well known around the local area. And all us rednecks would be out there on Sundays <laughs> doing our thing. Uh, then in, uh, I got the notes here, but I can't see them. I don't have my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in 1987, we started a four-cylinder class. And that was when the stock cars were getting a little bit slack because everybody was going to front-wheel drives and four-cylinders. And so we started a four-wheel, a four-cylinder class. And I think that was four-cylinder in general four-cylinder front-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive together. And then the next, there were so many participants in that, they wanted to split it up. So they had their own classes. They had a four-cylinder rear-wheel drive class and a four-cylinder front-wheel drive class. So that worked out well for quite a few years. And, and every year you'd seem to have a dominant class where you'd have a lot of cars in one class and not so many in another. But then a couple of years down the road, you would, the class that was really weak, well, that would be the dominant class. You'd have a lot, real, you know, a lot of cars in that class. It's funny how it works, but that's just the way it was. And then I think, if I can read, yeah, 1998, we started the, a junior class, and that turned out to be really good. And that was for kids 13, 14, and 15, and or up to 16, right? And it's really surprising how good these kids did out there. And, you know, it was just... Many weeks, some of the, a lot of the people, the spectators, would say, you know, the best racing was a junior class, you know, and just to see the kids out there just, you know, going as fast as they could, and we tried to keep them extra clean, you know, if I was no slamming and banging and everything, but they really did, they put a great show on, and I think there must have been, this is just my own memory here, but over the years, I think there must have been at least four or five kids that graduated a junior class and came back the next year in adult class and won the championship. Now, I mean, that's something to say about how good these kids are doing. Right, Alicia? <laughs> <laughs> she did it a couple of years ago. I was pretty proud of her. So, uh, I got sidetracked here a little bit. But uh, back in uh, 19... Cindy, help me out here so I don't have to go through all these notes. When did we start Latch Key? That was like in 1982 80, or three. 80. 84. We had a couple of little benefit races before yeah. that, right. but in 1984 we started our latchkey race, and the latchkey name came. From, we was going to do it on Merritt Bay because we could draw a bigger crowd, and we thought we could, you know. And but the ice conditions didn't work well for us for a few years, but uh, we call it the Latchkey Cup because Meredith is the, the latchkey to the White Mountains. That's where the name latchkey came from. So we did manage to get, I think, three races on Meredith Bay. And in 19, I can remember this one, uh, 1988, we raced on Meredith Bay, and we had 118 race cars on the ice that day. I mean, unbelievable. And they, they came, we had three different ice racing clubs in, in the area. Ours here, there's one in Middleton, New Hampshire, and that's... Uh, What's that one, Danny? Jaffrey. <laughs> New England Ice Racing Yeah, New England Ice Racing Club. And there's one in Jaffrey, New Hampshire, which is Jaffrey Ice Racing Association. And all these, all three clubs would try to get together, and we'd always hold our latchkey race on a Saturday so we didn't interfere with their Sunday racing. And they would always come up and help, or race with us and help join in the car count and raise money for the Norris Cotton Cancer Center. And over the years, it... It's, I got it here, but I think it's like 228000 Is that right, Cindy? Yeah. $228,000 we've raised for the Norris Cotton Cancer Center with our last key race. I'm very proud of that. Our whole club is very proud of that. And this year coming, our board members and club have des decided to, uh, instead of raising the money for the Norris Cotton Cancer Center, we want to do it for local you know, people in need. Uh, maybe some uh, scholarships, 
we want to keep the money local. Just and we're going to try it and hope for the best with that. Mm -hmm. So uh, I got sidetracked again on a couple of things, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, back throughout the years we've had a lot of celebrities coming and taking part of our regular race then or our last key race. And I know uh, in, I think it was about 1980, 81, whenever they were running for president, Ronald Reagan was doing a little thing at, which is now was Berry Pond and it used to be Country Fair Inn with Ken Smith run. And he had a busload of people there and when they left they see all the activity on Berry Pond so they stopped where the rental sheds are now, that used to be a little pull off there, and, they, and their tour bus stopped there on the way to North Conway to do another little show, uh, not a show, but, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it was a show. They, they see all the people on the pond, so they decided to come down. Yeah. And Ronald Reagan actually came down on the pond and flagged one of the races. And they were only there for maybe 15 minutes at most, because... They was scheduled to be at, in North Conway, and they, you know, had to meet their deadline. So they all, after they flagged the race and shook hands with everybody, they took off running and got on the bus, and, and away they went. Well, one of the Secret Service men or whatever, he got so involved in the race and he missed the bus. <laughs> <laughs> so that's rumor has that, and I've heard that story quite a few times. I was there, but I. I I'm pretty sure this is true, and that was back before cell phones. So somebody had to take him. And, you know, the next stop and drop, drop him off. So that was pretty cool that we have somebody like Ronald Reagan there. So I know at our last key races, we've had Judd Gregg. He was there. We've had, I think, to my knowledge, three Miss New Hampshire's have been there. I always shook hands with them girls. <laughs> and, uh, we've had a lot of celebrity race car drivers. We've had at least three... Uh, NASCAR, Bush North champion drivers there with Brad Layton. Mm -hmm. And Brad started racing uh, with me on Marath Bay. Uh, and Brad has come a long way since then. You know, if everybody knows knows all about Brad, he's won some ch a championship or two with the NASCAR North and, and ACT, I think. And he's done really good for himself. And he got his start on with the ice racing club. So that's pretty, pretty cool right there. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, I remember the first time Brad was in a car. We was lining up on Marath Bay, and I'm sitting in my car, and this little duster pulls up beside of me, and I looked over, and I said, geez, I'm cold. Nobody's even driving that car. <laughs> he was just a little kid, you know, sitting down looking, looking through the steering wheel, you know. And that's my memory of the first time with Brad racing. So that was cool. But uh, we've had, Brad was here. We had Mike Olson. He was a Bush North champion. Dick McCabe come down and race. He was a Bush North champion. And... Stubfad and Mike Rowe, we've had so many good guys. You know, Jamie Obey, he was another champion. I think two or three year champion, Jamie was. And he, he raced a couple of times with us. And then we had uh, Rick Fuller and Jeff Fuller out of Auburn, Mass. And they were modified champions. And my favorite, in 1989, I had my back operated on. And we got a hold of Bentley Warren. And he flew in a Berry Pond with his helicopter and drove my ice car in the Latchkey Cup. And he, maybe a lot of you guys don't know the name Bentley Warren, but he's one of the most famous New England race car drivers. And he, he raced in the Indianapolis 500 five times. I think he qualified for that. So, I mean, he's got a little bit of history. And he runs open wheel midgets and super modifieds and stuff like that. And the week after he raced on the ice, he flew to Phoenix, Arizona and raced in the Copper Classic out there. So, I mean, that's pretty cool, you know. So, uh, the celebrity drivers and, and all the different people, they added to it a little bit. Uh, we've been on uh, early early years ago. What, what, so, I'm, I'm guessing on this one, about 80, 85, 86, 7, somewhere in there, New Hampshire Crossroads, Channel 11. I don't know. Some of you people must remember that. I know I used to watch it all the time. They came up and they did a... seems to me like they were up there twice. I think so. I think they were there twice. And uh, that's where I got my famous line with them. <laughs> <laughs> they, they interviewed me a little bit and at the end, 
they asked me if I had anything else to say about ice racing. I said, yeah, I said, it's a pretty good sport and the black flies aren't too bad either. <laughs> so, that, <laughs> that stuck with me a little, a little while. So uh, yeah, they were there twice. And then last year, we had a Channel 9, New, uh, New Hampshire Chronicle. They came up and did a thing, and that was pretty neat. And uh, I was lucky to be part of that too. And uh, I was lucky, I'm lucky. Well, well, uh, I just got to look at, oh yeah, see, he's got these notes here, but I'm not going by them at all. Like I said, that's the first time I've done anything like this, so I'm doing the best that I can. Uh, we have a, a raffle at Sandwich Fair, a, a club raffle to help pay for some of the club uh, you know, insurance and different things like that. And we've been at Sandwich Fair for Jesus and Crow City. How many years do you think? Oh my gosh. At least, Way back. At, at least 25 years, right? We've been there every year. And yeah, because we used to do the trips to Nashville and the trips to Disney World. Yeah, and yeah. we have so many people that come and look for our booth yeah. just to buy our tickets. We don't even have to try to sell them. We have so many people that support our club, and that's what keeps us going, you know, with all our club members and the local people and the townspeople, every, and they come from far away, you know, and just to buy our raffle tickets, and we're really Thank pretty so proud of that, you know? <laughs> and we've been lucky, we've had a lot of local winners over the years, so that helps too. And, oh, let's see here. We're, we're pretty lucky to uh, have the, a place like Berry Pond to race on. That's our main place. I mean, it's so local, it's part of the town, it's, very good uh, access, and you get so many new people that are just driving by on Route 25 that look down in and see this big cloud of snow dust, and they what in the heck is going on there? So they drive in, you know, they've never experienced anything like that. And uh, then we have a, a secondary pond where we race, and that's on Lee's Pond. And uh, we had to do that because a lot of times we have to have 12 inches of ice safety rules. We have to have 12 inches of ice to, to be able to race because we'll chew up six inches of ice in the corners in any given Sunday. So if you only got 12 inches, you, have, you take six away. I mean, you don't have to be a brain surgeon. That's only six left. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a lot of times we've been racing a lot, in a lot of water. But we, number one, we have to be safety conscious because I don't know about the rest of the guys, but I can't swim with 3,000 pounds strapped on my back. <laughs> and, uh, so. We don't want anybody to get hurt, you know, and that's the number one thing, especially when you got your kids and your grandkids out here racing. You Safety is number one thing, you, you know, and uh, you know, we all want to have fun and whatnot, but you still got to think of the, the safety side. And uh, so with the two ponds, we jump back and forth, whatever, we have best ice conditions. And uh, that, that works out really well. I know we have a few people on Lee's Pond that don't like to see us come down, but hey, we have more people that do want us down there. <laughs> and uh, we, we try not to disturb anybody other than a little bit of noise. And, but I think at night we go down there and it's a lot of work. It's not just Sundays out there fooling around. It's, I mean, sometimes it's two or three nights a week we're down there plow, laying the tracks out, plowing the tracks out, plowing the spectator areas out. And it's just so much work for the plow guys that people don't even see. Come Sunday, everybody just pulls up to their fa favorite spot on the, you know, to watch the races or whatnot. But it's just so much work that you know, people don't even you know, know about to get these shows going. And we are very fortunate that we have people that help us do that with the price of gas and everything. We, we have a, a little plow fund we set up every year. And sometimes these guys, don't get more than $10 an hour for their plow trucks. And you know you can't run a plow truck for, for that kind of money in today's world. But they keep coming back every year and helping us out, and we really appreciate it. Because if it weren't for the plow guys, we couldn't do it. You know, we couldn't race. And it's just part of the sport, and they, they just love it as much as we do. And uh, let me just take a quick look here again. <laughs> Bear with me. Uh, I missed a couple of things here, Cindy, so you're going to have to help me out. The secretary did the notes, I think. <laughs> well, you know, we have the, we're very fortunate to have 
all the townspeople, as far as the select men and everything behind us and the police and the fire department. We're very fortunate to have all these people behind us every year. When we want to go get our permits, there's no questions asked. They just sign everything, and, and uh, we have to get the select men to sign it, right, Cindy? And then we have to go through yeah. the state. No, 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 it goes to the fishing game. The fishing game. We used to have, well, maybe initially, we had to get the select men to, like to sign it. And they time ago that we had to get their approval. Yeah. But maybe where we do it every year, we don't have to have the second one. But we still, everybody is very supportive of, of our club, and we want to keep it that way. And we always police our area very well, you know, as far as picking up garbage and stuff. And we try to, we have trash barrels, but we try to keep the, you know, have the people put all the cigarette butts and stuff like that in the trash barrels. But we just go along every week after the races. Well, actually, when we draw for positions, we have what they call, we have a red tag. And if you pick that red tag, a yellow tag out, right, Cindy? That's, <coughs> you <laughs> help me out here. <laughs> no, we, 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 that, that's the way it used to be done. Now, this, as they sign up as members, like five of them are helpers. Are yeah, we, yeah, yeah, we used to do the tag thing. Now it's every week at the driver's meeting, we pick out, I mean, not at the driver's, the, the weekly meeting the week before, we pick out five people in order how they signed up to, to pay their dues. And they're the helpers, and they help put out all the signs and at the beginning and the tires and stuff. And at the end, they pick up everything, and then they go around with the trash buckets and pick up everything. And in the last, uh, I would say, uh, 15 years, we've made it mandatory that all race cars, when you aren't racing, you have a plastic sled or a piece of carpet or something like that that will absorb anything because... I have never seen a race car or any type of vehicle that didn't drip something. So we try to contain any fluids, you know, that might a little oil leak or transmission leak or something like that. We want to contain everything that we possibly can so we don't pollute the ponds. Because if we pollute the ponds, then we don't have any place to, to go and, and play. You know, I mean, that's just understandable in today's world. And... Uh, how many years have we been running Sierra antifreeze? That must have been 12 years, maybe. I we know. make it mandatory that every race car runs Sierra antifreeze. And that's a biodegradable antifreeze. It's not talk, non-toxic and everything like that. And it's very expensive, but that's one of the things that we make every, every participant do in their car. And I don't know. I've, we've been racing for... Uh, when we first started out racing... We just raced for uh, trophies every week. We did that for, oh, well, probably 15 years or so. And that's all we raced for, just three trophies for the feature winners and a couple trophies for the heat runners. And uh, some of us more dedicated, I don't know, but not dedicated. But, but we wanted to initiate points thing in there. So we race for points now also. And I'll tell you what. Uh, it gets very hectic out there when you're racing for points. Every 99% of the participants, when you're in the pits, if you break down, everybody comes in and helps work on each other's cars and get everybody out there to do the best that, that we can to get the car count out there. When you're on the track, it's a different story. There's no more friendship out there. <laughs> but if, when you run for points, it's even a little bit more hectic. And I've been very, very fortunate over the years to get a couple of championships. And uh, this last last winner, I did two years ago, I won a championship in a modified class, and Alicia won in a junior class. And I thought that couldn't be beat. I just, I was on cloud nine for a whole year. Last year, I talked to, I guess, you know how, I, I, I just didn't think it, this was a goal I never set for myself. I didn't think it was possible. But I won a championship in a modified class again. Alicia won the championship in the front-wheel drive adult class. My grandson, Christopher, won the championship in the uh, junior class. And my nephew, Michael, and, and my other uh, Michael won in the stock class, and Danny was right there on his heels. You know, and it was just unbelievable to be able to share it with the kids. You know, and it's just, I just, you know, it's just unbelievable. But uh, I'm very proud to do it. And, Probably it'll never happen again, but they can't take that one away from us. <laughs> uh, 
I'm very proud as a club member, and I know the club is very proud to have our club in the town of Moultonboro. We, uh, like I said, the, everybody supports us well, and we're very proud to, to, to be here. Uh, I've raced in Jaffrey Ice Racing Club, and I've raced in Northwood, Northwood Lake. They have a little race down there on Saturdays once in a while. And I raced in New England Ice Racing Club, and there's no place like home. I tell you what, mm -hmm. our club is the girls, the, all the flag people, everything. They just run our club so good, so efficient. And every the lineups are right there. One race goes off the track, and another race is all lined up, and they're right out there. And you know, all I can say is thank you because I'm always working on cars or racing myself. Come race day, I'm the biggest kid down there, <laughs> and uh, I've been doing it longer than anybody. And, in our club, and I'm still come race day. I I have more fun than anybody on the on the pond, and it's been a very very big part of my life. And I think what makes it even bigger is I have so many family members that are racing, and my sister Cindy and my sister-in-law Linda, they they do all the club stuff. I got another sister Lisa that collects money at the gate, and my brother Danny plows, and all the kids race. I mean, it's just I'm a very fortunate person to have all my family helping out or participate in, 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 in the sport that I love. And I just don't know how else to say that, but I don't know. Anybody, uh, Mike, you, what, would you like to say anything? I'm, I'm good, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know. I, I couldn't oh. talk what you've just done. So. <laughs> uh, so, did I miss anything, Cindy? Well, they don't have time enough, but you covered the general gist of it, yeah. How, you can ask them if they have questions. Tell people how you get points. There may be some people who don't aren't familiar with the racing. Well, we changed that. Uh, <laughs> Linda, can you do that, Linda? <laughs> <laughs> uh, heat races, they don't get any points. When you sign in for the beginning of the day, you get points. And then on how you finish the feature, like first place gets ten, 10 and then second gets nine and eight, seven, and it goes back, and they're accumulated. Latch key, there are no points, but I mean, and then at the end of the year, we tally them up for the championship. How many cars do you have, Jack? Right now, our car count is down a little bit on account of uh, the economy. And another thing, when we first started racing, we had a pile of cars because that was, uh, that was the only thing that we could do, you know, on Sundays around here. And but then over the years, over the years, a lot of our participants have graduated off to summer racing, either on the dirt or on the asphalt, and that really took a lot of, you know, it's a lot of expenses to do one season of racing. Say so nothing about all year round, and I'm. Probably the dumbest one here because I do it year round and have been since 1980. I think I race on a dirt every Saturday night, going off someplace, either around there or, or I've been at Bradford, Vermont, racing there every Saturday night since 1995. So I'm really got a bad habit of going around in circles. <laughs> hopefully, end up where you started from. But do you have to have special? Do you do special tires and equipment, or is it just like a uh, we we run chains on on a re, uh, drive tires, regular like car chains, but they got studs or V bars, and uh, then on our front tires, or in the case of a front wheel drive on the rear tires, we run uh, which is like a roller chain, like a motorcycle chain, a sprocket chain, and uh, now we've graduated and we're putting in snowmobile studs inside the the sprocket chain just to make things a little bit more costly and go faster, <laughs> but uh, it's really, the classes have really uh, grown as far as how fast the cars are going. It seems like every year the, the cars get a little bit faster. I mean, I used to be able to compete with an old homemade modified, and I was, and, you know, done really well with that for quite a few years, then all of a sudden, I was having trouble to just to finish in the top three, you know, or maybe get one win a year. I'd be really proud of that. I was used to getting, you know, winning every other week. Uh, one week we raced ten weeks. I won every week. You know, I was really proud of myself. But then all of a sudden, here I'm, 
not the king dog anymore. I'm just, you know, really lucky to finish in the top three because the cars were, they were using different types of modifieds and, and they were going faster. So I had to buy, invest in the same type of car. Now I'm back racing with all the them guys again. What's the size of the track you run on? A third of a mile. A third of a mile. Yeah. And how many cars in the heat? Well, if we have, say we have 12 cars in a class, we have six in one heat, six in another heat. And, and then, then all the cars run in the feature. And then who moves on? Everybody. Oh, everybody. Actually, it's just the heat races. Unless, say we had 30 cars in a class like we used to have. The heat races did mean something. You had to qualify because we only started 18 cars in the feature. So they take the top four out of each heat. And that would be three heats. And then we'd have two courses. And you take the top two out of the, each car seat, it, you know, however, right, something like that. Yeah, one. That, that was for your time when we had that many cars. But now, if we have a big, a big class, it's, it's probably a dozen cars, a dozen, 14 cars for a big class now. Because we have so but, many classes. Because we have so many classes. Yeah, exactly. That's another thing, too. We have five classes of cars, so it makes the, the, the classes a little bit smaller. <laughs> Uh, I back I don't know it was in the late 80s we had a sheriff's uh, cow down on the ice and he had his radar set up and I had won the feature that day and he clocked me at, I think 68 miles an hour or something but I know the cars are now a lot faster than they used to be so sometimes I wonder if I'm going to make it through the corners you know I mean <laughs> <laughs> how many women race how many women race? How many women race? Mm -hmm. We've we've had over the years we've had some very good women races, and uh, uh, right now what do we have? Or in the in the kids class, I think it was uh, three girls racing the kids class last year, right? Two or no, three. Alicia was in front. Alicia, Alicia was in the Jackie adult Martell class. And, um, but uh, Sarah. Sarah. over the years we've had girls like Nancy Kawa, Crystal Eldridge. Yeah. Uh, Marsha, Chase. Yep. I mean, we've had girls just go out and get compete with the men, wheel to wheel, race after race, and they did outstanding. I'm telling you what, you wouldn't. You take the helmet off, or with a helmet on, you wouldn't know it was a girl out there. They just did outstanding jobs, really. And I'm really, you know, I I, I raced in a four cylinder class one time, <laughs> and I said I don't care if I come in second or the last, as long as I beat Marsha Chase. <laughs> <laughs> she never let me live that. That was just a joke, but I said, I can't have you beat me. <laughs> but uh, that, that's just my own thing. <laughs> but it was kind of. Did you? I, I really don't mean that, but I, 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 I wouldn't want to race with the kids today. <laughs> so the, the, you, you start off on a clean sheet of ice. Yes. Right? And then you start tearing it up. And so, so the speeds must drop. Don't they, no, actually, they get better. Is that right? Yeah, because when the ice is really smooth, it's slippery. It's real well, it's like ice. But it's, I mean, it's, you come in, you don't have anything to hold you. You know, a good handling car, you can make it through. But the majority of the cars, you need a little bit of a groove in the corners where we dish it out. Yeah. And that helps hold a car in, like a bank track. And uh, you know, I've gone out in the hot laps and on a brand new track, brand new, you know, at the beginning of the year, and going out, my car was just handled awful. I come in, I say, oh boy, I don't know what I got to do to this, I got to make some changes, this thing is awful. And then to go out and after everybody makes their hot laps, and uh, go out for our heat races, and you go out and then you get it grooved up a little bit, and then you say, boy, I'm glad I didn't make any changes, this thing is going good now. <laughs> but, sometimes we've had... Uh, holes open up, cracks, stress cracks open up, and with all the weight out there, uh, you're actually bringing up water on the surface. And then with the snow banks, uh, it kind of, it's so much weight on the outside that it actually, when it, with the water in it, it pushes down and it'll break the ice off, and the snow banks will settle down a little bit, and then you, sometimes you can end up with six, eight, ten inches of, of water out on the outside of the track. And if you can get through the day, you did really well because you know I, I'm gonna race on that track next week. 
And uh, to tell you the truth, I remember once uh, we started out at the beginning of the year was our first race, and there was no snow out there whatsoever. It was just a complete glare ice. But we had all kinds of ice, so us diehards, we wanted to race. <laughs> so we set tires up around, and, and uh, we raced around the tires. And uh, at the end of the day, the cars were getting stuck in the snowbanks. That's how much ice that we had chiseled up off the track that day. It's hard to believe. But safer for the spectators when there was snow, though. It is very much safer, yeah. <laughs> but we try to keep uh, the spectators back to a safe distance. But it's just like anything. It's the unexpected. You know, you never know. Anything can happen. We've lost tires off cars and stuff. And we've been very lucky over the years that, that nobody's been seriously hurt, you know. And, I mean... We've had our bangs and bruises, but we've been very fortunate. You know, knock on wood, hopefully nothing will ever happen, you know. But it's out of our hands. How many, ra how many cars do you bring to a race? How many do I bring? <laughs> <laughs> now you're gonna, now you're gonna find out how stupid I really am. <laughs> I, I have my own modified. I have a modified my son-in-law drives. I have a four-cylinder that my grandson drives. I have a four cylinder that my granddaughter drives. I used to have a stock car that my nephew's Danny drove. But now I'm really lucky because he's got his own car. So I don't know what <laughs> but I dedicate my whole winter to ice racing. I, I just love it. And it's really fun when all the kids and everybody come over to my house and we're all working on cars. Last year, after Latch Key Race, everybody, we raced on Saturday, our Latch Key Race. And we broke a lot of equipment. <laughs> and we, you know, got all our cars moved back home. We started working on them. Mike come up. How, how many people were up to my garage? For work? I think it was nine of us up there. Nine different drivers up to my garage. You know, fixing radiators, fixing this, doing that, welding this. I mean, it was just everybody helping everybody and then the next day we we're going to go compete at, you know with each other again you know that's what makes ice racing so much fun when you can do that and i'm just like i said i'm really glad to be a part of it and you just meet so many nice people and they're all there for the same reason that you are you know and, and your granddaughters get their hands dirty too. <coughs> she knows how to fix it too well, <laughs> she's really good with a computer. <laughs> what? No, I, I, you might, might want to mention your website. These people might like to. Yeah. So, Linda, you can help me out with the website. <laughs> yes, we, it's www.lakesregionicerasingclub.com. And we also are on Facebook. Yeah, so, uh, but on the website, there's a lot of videos too you can watch of in car, you know, with cameras from inside the car or in the middle of the track. And um, so, you, from the website, you can get to those. There's lots of pictures from Dave Suter on there. Yeah, and Linda, tell them about the people from Pennsylvania. Dylan can tell about them. <laughs> <laughs> There was, um, on the email site, we had a couple from Pennsylvania that were uh, interested in coming up to see the latchkey race. And they're what people would call race chasers, and they belong to a club themselves, and they try to see how many racetracks they can go to in a year, and they have to have pictures and stuff to document it or whatever, and then they go on the internet and blog about it. and. So we had to cancel last week because we didn't have enough ice, I think, for our first scheduled date. So then they kept, you know, emailing and stuff. And they ended up coming up when we had it on the Saturday, and um, they sent a very nice um, email back saying how impressed they were with how great the show went, how fast, you know, the cars came out for each class and the competition, and they just had high remarks completely for everything for our club. And they went to how many last year? Probably 90. They went to like 90 different racetracks oh, last year. And so they were very impressed with us. That's something to really be proud of when you, when people go to 90 racetracks in a year and they 
right the way we run things. Yeah. No. And the lady mentioned no. how she got out of work at five o'clock, get home, and her husband was in the car ready to go, and they drove you know <laughs> nine hours to get up here because they wanted to go to the race, and you know, I mean, how much they enjoyed it. Yeah. Do you ever have motorcycles? Uh, We've had uh, just a couple of people come up and demonstrate the motorcycles on the ice with the spikes and the tires. It's pretty impressive, but we just don't have time for, in our club for, <laughs> to do that. To do more Another. things. Yeah. Yeah. In the, at the beginning of the season, our daylight, uh, the afternoons when the sun drops down behind Red Hill, cool. I tell you what, uh, we're hauling race cars off the pond in the dark, you know, <laughs> and it, it gets it gets very cold and, and dark quick down there. So like, at the end of the season, if we get to race in March, the days seem to be, a, you know, the daylight hangs with us a little bit more, but our ice conditions are a little softer too. The, the interior of these cars are, are like race cars, roll bars, and yes. just, uh, just basic seating. And our modifieds are complete, full-blown race cars. With you know, most of them, most of our modifieds are factory built cars, old, oldest dirt modifieds and stuff like that. Uh, the junior class, they have to have a full roll cage. You know, everything they have to, the juniors have to have a full roll cage. They have to wear neck braces, window nets. I mean, just like any race car, because we want the kids to be able to go to school the next day. You know what I mean? <laughs> and number one thing, like I said, safety. Uh, our stock cars that. We don't require full row cages, but we require three uh, bars in the driver's door. But most of all the guys are smart enough to put row cages in them, you know. Uh, the four cylinders are the same way, right? We only require bars in the door on them, doors on them, right? I, we don't have a pit steward here. Mm -hmm. But I know when I build a, a four cylinder, I, I do it just like I would in any car. I want it safe. You know, I go to the extra. And, and a lot of the people do too, you know, a little extra weight, but it just makes them last better and, and they're a lot safer. And the cars do go through an inspection every day. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point, Linda, too. Every day before we, after we sign in, we have a, a safety inspection where every race car has to go through the safety inspection to make sure the, brake, the brakes work, at least two brakes on the drive wheels. The wipers have to work. Uh, kids got to show their helmet, their window nets, and uh, fire extinguishers. Fire extinguishers. Oh, every car has to have a working fire extinguisher. The kids have to show, make sure they get the neck braces and different things. Uh, it's it just takes a little extra time, but it just keeps everybody on, you know. So these kids are able to race, and they don't tax or. Anything like that? <laughs> <laughs> I think they twitter a little bit. <laughs> oh, it's surprising how serious these kids actually take it. You know, it's really good to, to see them doing something like that without a computer in front of them. <laughs> but, you know, it's... I would like to see more kids out there doing it because it's just, like I said, we, we every kid that graduated, it's just most of the junior class has come back and done really well in, in the adult class. And with the junior class, they have to, uh, they have to have a legal parent or guardian on race, on the race uh, track, on the ice every day that they're racing. They have to, will be signed in by that legal parent or guardian. Uh, you know what I mean, and uh, they have to show a birth certificate when they sign into the club. So I mean, we keep everything as on the up and up the best that we can, and uh, so mainly if something one of them got hurt, you know, they got somebody there responsible for them. Do they have to get their own sponsors? They're supposed to. <laughs> well, that's what grandfather's coming. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I made my own. I made my own uh, problems because <laughs> I kind of coaxed them into doing it. And then, just believe it or not, my granddaughter likes it a lot better than my grandson does. But yeah, my gra I'll tell you this little story here. <laughs> Couple, the first, uh, second week, my grandson raced. He won the latch key, and 
he just he's he just comes to him natural. At least I had to work for it a little bit, but Christopher he does, it's everything he does just comes natural to him and he doesn't get all wound up about it. <coughs> so uh, a couple of weeks after Latchkey, Chris calls me up Sunday morning, he goes, uh, hey bumper, he goes, uh, I guess I'm not gonna race today. I said, what do you mean you're not gonna race today? I got the car all fixed, it's all ready to go. He said, yeah, I know, he says, but it's fishing derby weekend, he says, and I figured I'd probably go fishing. <laughs> and I says, well, do, you do what you want, Chris. I don't care, whatever. He said, well, Jesus, I'm crow bumper. I won last key on my second race helps. He said, what else is there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I said, okay, you go for it. <laughs> so, it's good that they don't take it as serious as I, as I do. <laughs> but, where I race on the dirt, I got her racing on the dirt with me. And she raced. My nephew's, he had a little Dodge Neon, and she raced that up to Bradford, Vermont last year, I think, about six times in a women's class. They race every other week. And boy, I'll tell you, I was one proud grandfather. She had three wins in three seconds. <laughs> yeah. I didn't even care how I did. Yeah. But I tell you, to see your granddaughter out there racing like that, it's, it makes you proud. And also nervous. I try not to. Her mother went out. She was nervous. <laughs> no, I just, I just like to see the kids doing that stuff. I mean, it's my life, so I look at it different than a lot of people would, I guess. But to, I've been for very, very lucky over the years to have some really good race cars to drive, and I don't have any goals left to set for myself. I just want to go out and, and race and have fun. But now my goal is to do it with the kids, you know. <laughs> but. Do you use special fuel? I run, uh, I buy my gas for my race car at the airport. It's five dollars a gallon, but it's a lot better gas and it's better for my motor. If you run uh, regular high test gas, that's, I don't know, it was like four something last year around, so another dollar a gallon for better octane and everything, it's worth it. And the, 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 with the, all the other cars, the stock cars and everything, they run high test gas or regular gas. Well, you did great. Hopefully, I didn't make too much of a fool. Thank you very much for the opportunity. It was so enjoyable. Thank you. Thank you. Like I said, I have a. I, I haven't done anything like this before, but it was kind of fun. I enjoyed it. I had a good audience.